Father, help us. Send your word to us. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Shepherding God's flock. God needs shepherds to take care of his flock. And he's always searching, looking for people who will be good shepherds to shepherd his flock. And for your information, God is always recruiting, recruiting. Because he's always meeting with disappointments, failures. So he's always recruiting. So that they can replace unfruitful shepherds. The reason why you are here is to learn how to be a good shepherd of God's flock. So, number one, who is a shepherd? Who is a shepherd? A shepherd is a person who tends sheep. Who takes care of sheep? Who protects sheep? Who directs sheep? That's who a shepherd is naturally. The word, the Hebrew word that is translated to shepherd is, is rawa, R-A-A-H, pronounced as R-A-W dash A-W. That word rawa is translated in the Hebrew, it is used for a shepherd, someone that takes care of sheep. In the Bible, it is translated into the following words. It's used, translated as shepherd, is translated as headsman. Not the Nigerian ones that we are afraid of. Eh? It's translated as pastor. It's translated as a, a friend, a companion, a keeper. So a shepherd, therefore, is Someone who leads God's people, who protects God's people, who guides God's people. A shepherd is someone who takes loving care of sheep, guides them, feeds them, and protect them. And you know, shepherds are very loving. They take loving care of sheep. If you are not a loving shepherd, you will see that the sheep will run away from you. But when you are a loving shepherd, you come out. The moment they see you, they come to you. Mommy is a shepherd of some few chicken. And when mommy comes out of the kitchen like this, those chicken, they will start coming. They start rushing to come to her. Why? 
because she takes care of them. So they know who takes care of them, who gives them things to eat. So they come. Hallelujah. In the Bible, God's people are called sheep. And God raises up shepherds to look after them. So God's people are what? Are sheep. 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 Psalm 95. Psalm 95 in verse 7. He says, we are the people or the sheep of his pasture. We are God's sheep. Can I have someone say, I'm God's sheep? Say it with confidence. Say it louder. We are the sheep of God. And God raises people that will take care of his sheep. The people that take care of God's sheep are shepherds. Hallelujah. So, we are God's sheep, the sheep of his pasture. Church members are God's sheep. The sheep of his pasture. Those whom God have called the people he has saved, they are his sheep. So when you are in a church, you need to understand that the members of the church, they belong to God. Whose sheep are they? They are God's sheep. They are God's sheep. And God's sheep need care. They need guide. That's why God is always looking for good shepherds. Shepherds that will care for his sheep. Now, I want to talk about sheep and shepherds in the church. There are two categories of people in every church. There are two categories of people in every church. First of all, everybody is sheep. But out of the sheep, God appoints shepherds. So in every church, you have the sheep, and you also have what? Shepherds. All of them, both sheep and shepherd, we are all the sheep of God. But in order for the sheep to be taken care of, God selects those whom he wants to use so that they will be what? They will be shepherds. They will be shepherds. So in every church, you have what? Sheep and you have shepherds. Okay. Who are shepherds in the church? Who are shepherds? Shepherds are those who play the role of leaders in one form or the other. So a leader is what? A shepherd. People who play one role or the other, they are the shepherds of God's sheep. And the reason why we have called you to this meeting is because you are leaders, right? And leaders are shepherds. Let's identify such people in the church, unit leaders, departmental leaders, youth leaders, women leaders, teenage leaders, choir leader, uh, ushering leader, home cell leaders. They are shepherds of God's flock. Can I ask you to say, I'm a shepherd of God's flock. So then I am a shepherd of God's flock. So we have sheep and we have shepherd. But all of us are what? Sheep 
under God. Amen? Now, in the church, the shepherds are also in different categories. That is how God operates. God appoints shepherds, but they are in different categories. Is that correct? Some shepherds are like senior shepherds. Some shepherds are like under shepherds. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So where shepherds are different categories. One is a unit leader. One is a departmental leader. One is a, is a deacon. One is a deaconess. Another category, one is a minister. One is an assistant pastor. One is, uh, is, uh, is an assistant resident pastor. One is a pastor in charge of a small church. One is a resident pastor. Shepherds have categories. Can we all say that? Shepherds have categories. Now, whatever the level you are, you need to be a sheep under your shepherd. And all of us are sheep under God. You know, a sheep must submit to his shepherd, isn't it? And a shepherd also has a shepherd who also has a shepherd. And the most senior shepherd is an under shepherd under Jesus himself. Do you understand what I've just explained? Yes. We are all sheep. We all must have shepherds over us. So whatever your level, you have a shepherd. You should have a shepherd. And if you want to succeed as a sheep, you must follow your shepherd. If you want to succeed as a sheep, you must do what? You must follow your shepherd. Every sheep must learn to follow his shepherd. And the shepherd follows his own shepherd and follows his own shepherd. That's the way God organizes his church. If you look into the wilderness, God appointed Moses to be the chief shepherd under him for the children of Israel. Moses. Now, when Moses started the work, he had only two assistants. Do you know their names? What are their names? And uh, and Hall. And then Joshua also, you know, came in like the servant of Moses. Structure. Then he came to a time the work became big. It's like when, when the church is growing, the Moses couldn't do it alone. He had to appoint other shepherds under him. He picked, you know, elders and made them leaders. So they had, they had a shepherd looking after 50, shepherd looking after 100. You understand me? Every shepherd is his own category. But you submit to your leader who is your supervising shepherd. In Chapel of Victory, we are all shepherds, but we all are at different levels and categories. Is that clear? If we are going to succeed in leading the sheep correctly, every sheep must follow his shepherd. Every sheep must do all. Must follow his shepherd. Must follow his shepherd. The only way a sheep fold can be successful is when a sheep obeys the shepherd. May you be a faithful sheep. May you be a faithful sheep. And may you be a successful shepherd in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
why God needs you as a shepherd is because the sheep needs to be cared for. There is a reason and a purpose why we are shepherds. We must not feel God in the name of Jesus. All right. So, what have I said? A leader is basically a shepherd. He has a duty to care for specific groups of people. When you are involved as a shepherd, your duty is to guide, to feed, and to care for God's people. Every disciple of Jesus is called to be a shepherd. And every disciple in Chapel of Victory has the opportunity to be a shepherd. I'm praying for grace that you will be a shepherd in Jesus' name. Now, there are good and there are bad shepherds. There are good shepherds and there are bad shepherds. Just as there are good leaders in Nigeria and there are bad leaders. There are good leaders in the community and there are bad leaders. God wants us to be good, good shepherds. So let's discuss who is a good shepherd. Remember, all of us have been called to be shepherds, isn't it? That's why you are here, because you're a leader. John chapter 10. Let's read verse 11 to verse 14. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, not the sheep, whose own the sheep are not, he sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and flee. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flee because he's a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and have known of mine. So you can see here, Jesus is telling us that there are good shepherds and there are bad shepherds. A good shepherd, number one, is the one who gives his life for the sheep. He's committed to the sheep and to the sheepfold. A good shepherd is one who lays down everything for the care and protection of the sheep. God wants us to be good shepherds. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 36, we see David as a good shepherd. A good shepherd is the one who is committed to the protection, growth, life of the sheep. That's who you are called to be. See, and David said to Saul, your servant kept the father's sheep. So the father is the owner of the sheep. David was a shepherd. He says, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamp out of the sheep. Next verse. He says, and I went out after him. That's a good shepherd. He's concerned about the sheep. He doesn't want the sheep to be lost. He doesn't want the sheep to be scattered. He doesn't want the sheep to be stolen. He says, I went after him. I smote him. I delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the bear and I smote him and slew him. This is what God has called you as a leader, as a shepherd to do. To protect the sheep. To put your life at risk for the sheep. Hallelujah. May the spirit of a good shepherd enter into you. In the name of Jesus. Okay. 
Let me just, I will come back to describe for you the work of a shepherd. But first, I want us to discuss the characteristics of a bad shepherd. Who is a bad shepherd? A bad shepherd. From the scripture we read, we can say that a bad shepherd, number one, is the one who operates like a higher lane. A bad shepherd, a bad leader, is the one that operates like a higher lane. What's a higher lane? A higher lane is somebody who expects to be paid. A higher. So when you are a leader, a shepherd of God's flock, and you are walking because you expect to be paid, or you are walking based on payment, you are a bad shepherd. You know, a bad shepherd, we say, I never chop this morning. I just follow this chip about. Eh? I never chop. He will just go and sit down somewhere. Say, ah, ah. Have me, I no go chop. Now to just so they follow sheep, follow sheep, follow sheep, you know, and then you wouldn't even know when the lion will come. Will he know? Because he's thinking of himself. That's a higher lane. A higher lane is, I mean, a bad shepherd is someone who operates like someone that is employed. You know, someone that is employed in our place, we say, Ogata, Ogata, Owala, Ruakwe. A higher lean, he will say, Whether I sell market, I not sell market, my salary go complete. That's a bad shepherd. Right? He's just waiting for the end of the month, make them pay me. Where that church grow, church no grow, new people come, oh, they no come, oh. people stop coming, oh, but they no stop coming, oh. now they won't be that. At the end of the month, where is my pain? That's a bad shepherd. And Jesus said it. He said a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, but the hireling, when he sees the wolf, what does he do? He runs away. Which one concern me? I go come die for this work. Eh? Like uh, bad, bad sheep and bad shepherds. They try to pollute the good shepherd. When they see them walking, they say, ah, well done, no. Now only you, they. They carry the wolf ahead. Ah. They will start discouraging good shepherds. See, they carry him for head. You know, go rest. Now your papa walk. <laughs> hmm? What, what do they get from that, that thing where they do self? The work of the master himself that rewards you with good health, long life, and the things that you cannot quantify. And evil people will be sowing bad seed in your heart to make you a bad shepherd. You will not succumb to evil in the name of Jesus. We are shepherds. God has called us to be good shepherds. Let's look at more characteristics of a bad shepherd. Isaiah 56, from verse 10 to 12. Isaiah 56. A bad shepherd. The one that does not love the sheep, but he carries the title of a leader of a pastor, of a minister. He says his watchmen are blind. So bad shepherd, they are blind. They are blind. They don't see what is going on. When the sheep are in trouble, they don't see it. So blind. He said they are what? All ignorant. Bad shepherds. Very ignorant. They don't know what is happening around them. They are not learning. They don't want to improve. He said they are all dumb dogs. Very dumb. What's the meaning of dumb? A dumb person is somebody that does not talk. Abi, 
or does not hear. Which one is uh, dumb? Deaf is here. Dump is you cannot speak. Dump. And I told you, for you to be a successful leader, you must be strong and courageous. And that means you must know how to talk. Use your mouth. See, communicate. Eh, please, you are late. Come and sit here. Eh, eh, you, 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 go for evangelism here. But bad shepherds are dumb. They don't know how to correct. They don't know how to instruct. They think that if they correct you, they will hurt you. But they don't know that they are destroying you by not correcting you. Because a child that is not corrected is going to be messed up in life. We think that doing bad is okay. So when you are a bad leader, you cannot say, why are you late? Why didn't you come yesterday? We say you should come. You must be a good leader that helps people to grow. Talk to them. Correct them. He says, they are dumb. Dumb dogs. Look at this. What did he say they cannot do? They cannot back. Come back. Bad leaders, come back. My friend, sit down. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. The, the sheep will not follow you if you don't know how to speak and how to back. Will they follow? They won't. You're going to be a successful shepherd of God's flock. Learn to open your mouth. And when you need to back, what do you do? Back. They cannot back. They are sleeping. Lying down. Loving to slumber. That's it. Lazy leaders. All lazy, sleeping, lying down. Lazy. They can't carry themselves to do the work of God. They can't. Some of them will say, they want us to come on Saturday. Yes, which day will I ask you to come? Huh? If we say you should, you should come on Monday, you say you go to work. Come on Tuesday, you say you go to Wednesday. Where? So which day? If we ask you to wait after service, say ah, after the long service, they have one excuse or the other. Lazy, lying down, not wanting to do anything. Nobody succeeds with laziness. Nobody. To be a successful shepherd, you cannot be lazy. You can't love slumber. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Hallelujah. It says, yeah, they are greedy dogs. We can never have enough. They are never satisfied. Never. What you do for them is never enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand they refuse to understand their role. They refuse to understand their work. Our shepherds, they don't understand. They will always be shaking their head, shaking, shaking, shaking. No, 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 no. There are some of them in, in, in our house stations, you ask them to gather for this retreat. It's no, 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 no. They want to stay in their house and hold their phone, you know, to join a summit like this. What do you think we, we, they will be doing in their houses? They will sleep and slumber. They will go to a kitchen and go to a bathroom. They will never understand. Is that not so? When you have a summit like the discipline, gather. I will join online. Even when we do service, I will join online. You are a shepherd, you are joining online. And you sleep off on your bed. Ah, ah. No, success does not come to lazy people. Success comes to people who are not lazy. People who are ready to walk. This year, receive grace to walk in the name of Jesus. Am I saying something? Ez Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, verse 2 to 8. Just bad shepherds. So we just want to see, you know, characteristics of bad shepherd that should not be in your life. God wants you to be a good shepherd. What did he say? He said, Son of man, 
prophesy against the prophets, I mean the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy, say to them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. So bad shepherds, they focus on themselves. They're running after money. Eh? Ah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you are meant to take care of the sheep. But everything about chasing money, chasing prosperity, you don't have time for the people. You see, woe to them who focus on feeding themselves. He says, should not the shepherd feed the flock? Shouldn't you create time to feed the flock? Everything is not about, you know, prosperity, making it. Ah, you know, uh, uh, there's a language we use now. Is it survivor or what? Ozu. Ozu. Ozu, Ozu, Ozu. And you say you're a shepherd. Ah, no. It's not by title. It's by the work you do. You hustle yourself away from the kingdom of God. When that is your focus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 4. Say, the disease have you not strengthened. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty, you have ruled them. Look at the bad shepherd. They don't look for the lost. They don't care for the sick. They don't, uh, you know, they don't. Uh, look at it. They don't bound up the broken hearted. Huh? Those who have been driven away, they don't go and look for them and bring them back. Bad shepherd. They don't care. She didn't come to church. It's not my business. Shout hallelujah. Okay. Glory to God. Bad shepherds don't care about who didn't come to church or who have stopped coming. No, they don't care. Hmm. God make me a good shepherd. Let me hear you say that prayer. Pray it again. God make me a good shepherd. One more time. God make me a good shepherd. God does not tolerate bad shepherds. People don't care for the sheep. Let me show you God's judgment on bad shepherds. Ezekiel 34 verse 9 and 10. He wants us to be good shepherds. Don't be after your after money. Don't be after hustle. Think of the people. Look for those who are lost. Care for the sick. What does it say? Verse 9. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus hear the Lord God. Behold, I am what? Against the shepherds. And I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Wow. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be made for them. So you see, God says, I'm against you. I'm against them. I will take my sheep away from them. Take my sheep away. And I will take food from their mouth. That they won't even have, you know, you know the, the normal shepherd. Shepherds feed from the flock. So if you are a bad shepherd, you don't qualify to benefit anything from the flock. No, I, uh, I was with one of my friends, a bishop, who just moved to Paracord recently. And he was just sharing experience of ministry. How it is that Almost every Sunday after preaching, there will be different members of the church, sheep. They are the sheep. He's the shepherd, right? 
they will come and say, wow, daddy, oh, thank you for being our father. You know, some will say, thank you for the message. Oh, daddy, please, hold this one. You know, just buy for it, buy for it. And that one will say, oh, daddy, please. Some people will come with jam. Come. They prepared to come and be a blessing when they are coming to church. Some with money, some with gift, blah, blah, blah. So the shepherd feed from the sheep. I hope you understand. The sheep is meant to feed the shepherd. Some of you don't know. You don't take care of your pastors. Ah, my pastor, he doesn't need anything. He doesn't need anything, actually. Just like God also doesn't need anything. Anything you give is for your sake so that you'll be blessed. Now, will you have pastors, full-time pastors, non-full-time pastors around you, and they, they cannot feed from you? No, you should willingly be a blessing. Come prepared. Every time you come to church, you are thinking, ah, what can I give to my, to my, to my pastor today? We need to change our operations and stop being selfish and be a blessing to the shepherd so that the shepherd can also gladly be a blessing to you. I hope you know that the shepherd that is taking care of the sheep, he has a right to feed from there. The Bible says those who walk at the altar, they have a right to eat from the altar. How will they eat from the altar? When you don't, you don't think about it, you do nothing. You go to market, you buy rice and buy for yourself and your family alone. No, learn to receive blessing from your shepherd. You know, shepherd. When you begin to do it, you will see that the same spirit begins to come down. If you are a pastor, you are blessing your, 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 your own shepherd. Wow. Before you know it, others are blessing you. Others are blessing you. If you don't know how to give, the Bible says, give and it shall be given. Is it not? Give and it shall be given unto you. Let's change. Let's start from this leadership. You understand the principle of giving. Understand the principle of feeding the shepherd. Now, in the scripture we read, God is saying, if you are a bad shepherd, I will take that meat away from your mouth. Take it away. So if you want to be fed or to be feeding from the sheep, you need to be what type of a shepherd? A good shepherd. Do you know that you can be such a blessing to teenagers that they will, on their own, they decide to come to your house and just come and bless you. Or they can just buy some things on your, you know, to come and bless you. That's so when you're a good shepherd, you have a right to be blessed by the people. And you who are sheep, you have a duty to feed your shepherd. Hallelujah. Are we learning something this morning? Are you sure? Lift up here and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a good shepherd. Can I hear you say amen to that? Now, what are the responsibilities of a shepherd? What are the responsibilities of a shepherd? What is the work of a shepherd? Number one, a shepherd is to lead and guide the sheep. That's why I call you a leader. It's to lead Lead and guide. Psalm 23 verse 2. Psalm 23 2 says, He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. It is the duty of the shepherd to lead. You know, to lead means go in front. So when we're talking about, we're going to do evangelism in this house fellowship. The, the shepherd of the house fellowship will lead for evangelism. We have leader summit. The shepherd will be in front in attending the summit and come early 
your job is to lead. Is to be an example. Leading means be an example to the sheep. Show them how to come to church early so that they can join workers prayer meeting. That's why you're a leader. Lead. Guide them. Show them how to come early to home cell so that you are already seated and you are welcoming them. Got to lead the people. You lead from the front, not from the back. Is that correct? We are to lead. Lead by example. Number two. Watch over the sheep. Our responsibility is to watch over them. Watch over them. We are to watch over their souls. In Hebrews 13 verse 17, Hebrews 13 17, the Bible says you should obey them who have rule over you and submit to them. For they watch over your souls as they that must give account. So, you are a leader. You are to watch over the soul because you will give account. Somebody say, I will give account of the members of the church. Say it again, I will give account. To watch over their soul. It involves praying for them. It involves checking whether they are okay or not. It involves knowing whether they are backsliding or not. It involves checking whether they came to Bible study, prayer meeting, church service. Watch over their soul. It is your duty. When they are in difficulty, you are to watch over them in difficult times. David said in Psalm 23 verse 4, say, yeah. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil. Why? Huh? Who is with him? The shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And so when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Listen to me. When the people you lead are going through difficult times. You should be with them. Watch over them. Encourage them. Comfort them. Don't be too busy. So, I uh, 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 they chase one contract, oh, I know if it come. And the guy is in hospital. The guy is going through a challenge. A shepherd will watch over them in difficult seasons. It's your duty. Receive grace in Jesus' name. You watch over them through prayer, constant prayer. You watch over their soul by prayer. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. We talked about prayer yesterday. Colossians 4 2 says, Be constant in prayer. Through prayer. Another duty is to protect them. You have a job to protect them. Protect the sheep from spiritual wolves. You know we have spiritual wolves. Spiritual wolves. There are people that are preaching and the preaching they are preaching is not the true gospel. Do you know that? It's not every church that is open that is preaching the true gospel. When, you know, we first came to Podakot and started this work in the 90s, there were many, you know, what do you call them? All these uh, native doctor, all these, they were plenty, you know, they very plenty. But in the 20s, when they saw that market was not moving, they all became churches. All the soothsayers became pastors. Magicians became pastors. So there are churches where people will not go to heaven. So watch over them. 
so that those wolves will not steal them. Watch over. Visit them. Tell them don't go there. And teach them the word. We have a duty to watch over them. Receive grace to watch. Can I hear you say amen? So protect them against spiritual wolves. Also protect them against satanic attack. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's your job. You don't want the devil to be attacking them. So you pray for them against satanic attack. Father, I pray for all the members of my house fellowship. You will protect them against every form of satanic attack in the name of Jesus. Satan, all your strategies against brother this, sister this, I command them to fail in the name of Jesus. That's why you are a shepherd. Oh, I am a shepherd. Pray for them. Shepherd of five people. Pray for five people. It's easier. Shepherd of ten people in a house. Pray for them. You are a shepherd in charge of a, a music department. How many are they? Pray for them by name. Shepherd of media. How many? Pray for them by name. That is how the church will be kept. When everybody is concentrating on the few people. And your own shepherd. He can now concentrate on you and pray for you. His own shepherd can now pick the few and pray for uh, uh, Yeah. And then in church we pray for everybody. Level by level. Grade by grade. How many people are under your watch that you are praying for? If you are not praying for anybody, then you are not a, a, a good shepherd. You are not a good shepherd. You are selfish. You are feeding yourself. You are taking care of yourself. You are a shepherd because there are sheep to take care of. Protect them. Receive grace to protect the sheep in the name of Jesus. Number four, discipline them. Have you seen a shepherd that does not flog the sheep before? A shepherd that doesn't flog the sheep, the sheep becomes unruly. And I've been saying it since yesterday. That if you are going to succeed as a leader, you have to be strong and courageous. Discipline people. Rebuke people. Uh, David said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So discipline is comfort. When you flog somebody that is misbehaving, it's comfort. Discipline. Rebuke. Tell them, no, it's not okay. Why are you just coming? I will be a, a, a good pastor. And when service has started, you know, you could just see, why are you just coming? Eh? Look at the time. Don't look at the eyes if you feel you'll be, you'll be embarrassed. Just look straight. Say, why are you just coming? Look at the time. Look at the time. Let the person be embarrassed that he's late. If he's a leader, he will know that you are rebuking. Give them things to do. If they don't do it, say, w -w why didn't you do it? Why? Look, if we continue, you know, pardon the ego of everybody, the church can never grow, can never do well. No. Church is supposed to start at eight. Your members come every time at nine. And you just be smiling. When they have come, oh, praise the Lord, oh, we are here. When will you discipline them and make them to know that it is wrong? Talk to them sharply. Get angry. Let them know you are angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. You can be angry. So you people are frustrating me. Why are you doing this? I asked also to come for a prayer meeting. You are leaders. You are coming at this time. You are wasting my time. Talk to them. That's why we are shepherds. Stop smiling when people have done wrong. Stop smiling. A minister, you know, was coming to greet me this morning. I said, don't greet me. You didn't come yesterday. He went and greeted his pastor. The pastor, I said, yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you. <laughs> said, I said, no, I'll give you. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he didn't come. No, 
there are different ways you can let people know that what they have done is not okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let people know. Let people know. See, the same principle applies to your children. If you don't discipline your children, you'll be in trouble. So when they do something wrong, you must let them know. And the church members are our children. Amen? You are my children. Are you not? So the pastor, a good shepherd, will discipline. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Number Number what? Number five. Visit them. Visit the sheep. Visitation is a major part of the work of a shepherd. Visit them. Don't be too busy. Visitation is an expression of love. When you visit, you don't visit and sit down and watch Man U versus Arsenal and they give you coke with biscuit and then you get up and say, I am going. It's not enough. Visitation involves the ministry of the word and prayer. Ministry of the word and word and prayer. Share a, a word, even if for five minutes, encourage them and then pray for them. When you start doing that, they will look forward. When you come, they know that this, my leader, will leave a prayer behind. Am I saying something? Don't turn their house to recreation center. Every time that uh, Asna is going to play, that's where you are going. You will lose honor and respect. So how do you visit? Visit routinely. Make surprise visits. Visit to check their welfare and their spiritual status. I've mentioned three. Visit routinely. Visit with a surprise. Surprise visit. Visit to check welfare and spiritual status. Visit when things are not all right with the sheep. When things are not all right. When you hear, he has not come to church about three times. Go. And then you say, eh, I really don't know in my, my workplace, blah, blah, blah. He needs care. Okay? Be sensitive and visit as the Holy Spirit will direct you. That's why leader at different level. Visit at the house fellowship. Visit people in your department. Visit the SOD members that you teach. Visit them. When you visit, you are visited on behalf of the church, right? Yes. On behalf of the church. Visit. 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 Visitation tips. When you visit, you can visit straight from church or straight from work. So you are a leader. Leader, you should not be one of those complaining. Service is long. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You know, after service, he does work. Go and visit. When you're coming from work, branch, think of one person you have not seen. Go and visit. Okay? You can visit with another sheep. He has fellowship member. You say, look. To, uh, can we meet on Saturday? This person that didn't come to this house, we will go together. Visit with somebody. Amen? You can decide to go to one area. There are five church members. Visit all of them. Five, five minutes. Go, go, go. Visit. Hallelujah. You can also visit them in the office. You can call. Can I come to your office? You know, if you know that your evening is not free. And use weekends. And Sunday to visit. Receive grace for visitation. I say receive grace for visitation. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear you say amen. I don't have work. Because I need to. I need to begin to. To close. 
another work of um, a shepherd is to create and develop relationship among the sheep. Your work is to create and develop what? Relationship among the sheep. I want you to understand that a lot of people stay in the church because they have found a companion. They have found a friend. Yeah? If people are only in church because of the message that the pastor preached, when the pastor is not there, they will not be there. Do you understand? If people are coming to your house fellowship because they like the way you just do the house fellowship, when you are moved from that house fellowship to another one, they will stop coming. Do you understand? So your job as a leader is to create what? Relationship. Network people. Let people talk to one another. You can peer people together and say, look, the two of you for the next uh, uh, one, uh, one month want you to be praying together. You must meet, you know, uh, go to one another's houses huh? and come and give report. Create it. That's your job. Resident pastor. Look into it and be sure that church members have friends. Great friendship. There are some people, the moment service finish, they are gone. Watch out for them. Pick them. And look for a friend for them. I do it a lot. Somebody, okay. Hey, you, come. Oh, yeah. Put her phone in your phone. You know. Network people. Help people to develop relationship. It will help them to grow and to stay in church. Hallelujah. And then number next. Ne number next job of a leader is to create an, a comfortable environment for worship. An environment that they look forward to. Whether in the home cell or in the church, your job is to create a suitable place where the sheep can stay. Suitable place. If, we, if your church needs a venue, don't go and hire one local place that we make members to run away. Your job is to find a good place, a comfortable place. If you are in a, in a rented place, your job is to find land and build so that the work can become stable. If where you are using is leaking, your job is to quickly look for how to make it stop leaking. I hope you understand me. You have to create a place that is comfortable. If as a pastor, you want to start a home cell, don't take people to where it's so smelly when they go the first time, they won't come again the second time. Huh? And it is your job as a home cell leader to make sure that where people meet for home cell is neat. You must go early. Make sure that the place is clean, neat. A comfortable place. I'll show you one example. In, in uh, um, Numbers chapter 32. Numbers 32, verse 1 and 2 and 5. Glory to God. Numbers 32. We're talking about how to be effective, isn't it? If we're going to grow, we must do these things. Numbers 32. Now, let's read. Now, the children of Reuben and the children of God, they had a great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jaza and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. Verse 2. These are good leaders who understand what it means to be a shepherd. The children of God, and children of Reuben, they came and spoke to Moses and to Eliezer the priest and unto the princes of the congregation saying, next verse, 
you know, go on, go on, go on. I mean, yes, go on. Uh, hold on, go back, go back. Say, so wherefore, if you have found grace in your sight, let this land be given to your servants for a possession and bring us not to Jordan. Now, these people, they were shepherds with plenty of sheep. And when they saw a place that was good, hey, they begged to possess it. Say, give it to us. Because it's good for our cattle. Your job as a shepherd is to make sure that you find good and comfortable places for the sheep. For the sheep. We are going to open new cells. Find good and comfortable places. Am I speaking to you? Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Give him a clap. Give him a clap. I'm going to round off by telling you three ways to be a successful shepherd. Three or four ways. How do I be a successful shepherd? I've told you your work. Number one, to be a successful shepherd, you must be loyal to your leader, to your shepherd. Be loyal. You must be loyal. Loyalty is obedience. Anyone that does not obey instruction is disloyal. Be loyal. Because when you are a lawyer, you will be able to pass down truthfully, correctly what is passed to you. You must be loyal. Loyalty is submission. Anybody that does not submit is not loyal. Jesus submitted to God. That's loyalty. Loyalty is faithfulness to your assignment. If you are not faithful to what you are given to do, and when they ask you, now be running up and down. Let me ask. Let me find out. Then you are not loyal. A loyal person is faithful. He does not do things by eye service. Are you with me? Not by eye service. Oh. After all, my church is very far. <laughs> Before the area pastor come, he must tell me now. And then you are do what you like. You can't succeed. You must be loyal. And loyalty is faithfulness. Serving without supervision and serving well. Number two, if you're going to be successful as a shepherd, you must be sacrificial. You must serve by sacrifice. Sacrifice. You see, leadership is a sacrifice. A sacrifice of time, a sacrifice of money, a sacrifice of your life. You can't succeed if you don't make yourself a sacrifice. You must make yourself a sacrifice. You must be willing to sacrifice everything you have for the work that you are doing. Then you will succeed. Sacrifice means it's not convenience. When you talk about sacrifice, sacrifice has to do with pain. And shedding of blood. That's sacrifice. If you don't get to the point where you can drop your blood for the work of God, then you are not yet sacrificing. Sacrifice is something you do deliberately. Now, um, yesterday, somebody was taking offering and read Genesis chapter blah, blah, blah. You know, where Cain and Abel, they gave offering, isn't it? There was one offering that was accepted. There was one that was not accepted. The one that was accepted was the one that was given intentionally. Intentionally. Because he took what? The first. It was deliberate. He thought about it. The other one, he just took. 
If you want your sacrifice to be accepted by God, you must be intentional. You must know what you are doing. I am sacrificing my time. I will make sure that this thing works. You must be sacrificial. Lay yourself down. Jesus said, my life, I lay it down by myself. He said, nobody took it from me. I lay it down. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it. So I chose to lay. God did not force Jesus. I hope you know that. He didn't force Jesus. There is a lot of shepherds are being forced. If your pastor is not calling and calling, you will not be here. Your sacrifice is not willing. How can you get a reward? Be intentional. Make up your mind. I am part of this work. I will do it sacrificially. Then you will succeed. Am I saying something? Be deliberate. Be intentional. I will serve God. I will lead others. I will take care of the sheep. I lay myself down. Number three and last. If you are going to succeed as a leader, you must be a giver. You must be what? Be a giver. Be a giver. You can't lead people when you don't give them. People look up to you. Must be a giver. You give people your love. Give them your money. Give the church your time. Give the church your money. Must be a giver. Don't be selfish. But be you know, have a large heart, large hand. Because at your level, if you are giving and blessing people, helping people, you will attract more people and the whole church will grow. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if every little problem, you want to go and talk to the pastor, when you have that, you can use to be a blessing. Why are you a leader? Why? If you cannot be a blessing to the people, why are you a leader? Why? You must sacrifice, you must give. You must have, you must give. Be a giver. Give generously. Give consistently. God will bless you and reward you. Stop thinking of Hazul alone. See, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and it adds no sorrow to it. So go for God's blessing. It will make you rich. Hallelujah. I want us to rise on our feet. We're going to pray. Hmm. Did you learn anything? Okay. You are going to be better shepherds, isn't it? Okay. I want you to give thanks to God for what he has taught you. Are you going to pray and say, Lord, let's start from the last thing. The last three keys of becoming a good shepherd. You're going to ask God, make me a giver. Lord, deal with my heart. Help me. Take selfishness away from me. Make me willing to give in the name of Jesus. 